Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to the Underfloor Heating Review Channel. Today we start a new series of videos all about the basics of underfloor heating. So please do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content that's coming your way. As the title of this video suggests, today's video is all about circuits and zones and what this means. So let's start by talking about zones. A zone is essentially one of these, a thermostat. So it's a thermostatic zone. This means uh, a portion of the building um, that you want to be independently controlled of another. That's the simplest way of thinking about it. Um, the amount of zones that you have in a project can vary. You could have one thermostat doing your whole house, or you could have 20 of them, uh, controlling every single room individually. A circuit, on the other hand, is one of these. This is a coil of underfloor heating pipe. And the number of circuits you will need will depend on the type of system, how big your house is, amongst other things. I will go into more details on this uh, information in a future video. So pretty simple so far, right? The problem I've found in the past with clients um, with the distinction between a zone and a circuit always seems to happen when we're talking about and looking at underfloor heating drawings. So what I'll do now is take you over to the computer uh, and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So on the screen you'll see a typical underfloor heating drawing um, that a company would prepare for you. Um, so let's first look at the obvious thing. So we can see the pipes, um, we can also see different colours. So the colours identify different circuits. Now for example if we look in and take a good look at the kitchen in the living room here, you can see you've got three circuits, three coals of pipe. So the reason for that is that you can only have pipe a certain length. Um, this information will come from the manufacturer. Um, for example, this system uh, is, is, is within a screed. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see what I mean. Um, and you're limited generally between uh, 100 and 140 meters, um, you know, as, as an absolute maximum. Generally, 100 meters is the uh, is, is the maximum length. Um, so that's why we've got three circuits in this particular room. So now let's talk about this room as a zone. Well, you could have three thermostats in this room, each controlling each circuit separately, but it makes no sense. Um, and you're not gonna to wanna to control it independently. This room here is all one open area. Um, I'll just change the color for you, you can see. And now you can see that that, as a designer, for me, that would be one zone, one thermostat, um, so let's continue on. So here you can see we've got uh, an entrance hall and a plant room. So they're both quite small areas. Um, so what the designers have done here is they've actually used one circuit to control both rooms. So to control the plant room and the entrance hall. What this means for zoning is that can, they can never be controlled independently. So the plant room will never be a different temperature to the, to the entrance hall, depending on where you locate the thermostat. Um, that will pick up the temperature for both areas. So this would be our second zone. We now look in the bathroom. We can see here, so generally people want to, uh, want to control their bathrooms and have a separate temperature for them. It makes sense, you might want to have tiles, you might want a warm floor all the time or at a given time of the day. Um, so this would be our third zone. Now we've got uh, down here we've got a separate bedroom again the uh the pipe length on this one if i come over here you can see is 94 meters so we don't need a second circuit so one is fine and that's including the distance to get back to the manifold i'm going to be talking about manifolds in a future video um, so please stay tuned for that we've then got the master bedroom and the master ensuite now these have been it's good design practice to separate these because um, to have the ability to control them separately uh, if you needed to. Um, but you could technically control both of these on one zone if you wanted to. Um, sometimes people will um, put that all on one large circuit, but it, it, like I explained, it's not good practice because you lose the ability to control them. Uh, here, for example, in the entrance or in the plant room, um, they're very unlikely to ever need to be controlled separately. Um, on the other hand as well, what we could do is have one thermostat in the house, 
one zone, and that's all you have. Uh, now, the location of that uh, thermostat would be a little more tricky um, because it needs to take an average temperature throughout the whole house. Um, so that's the good thing with underfloor heating. You can have as many or as little thermostatic zones as you want. Um, so if this, was me, if, if, if this was me and with my house, I'd certainly have that as one. I'd have this one as another. I then want my bath controlled independently. I then have my, my guest bedroom. Then I'd have my master bedroom on a separate one as well. So in this particular house, um, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six zones, six thermostats. But as you can see here, we've got eight circuits. So I hope that's cleared things up for you. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about the different types of underfloor heating pipe, um, the different sizes, um, and also how you can calculate how much pipe you will need in a given area. So stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you soon. And if you've got any questions at all, then please do email me um, or leave some comments uh, in the description below and I'll do my best to answer every one of you.